Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of your favorite Goodman Games Twitch show, Raw or Rules is Written. My name is Matt Robertson, otherwise known as Grape Ape, and I'm joined with my co-host. Stefan Strahd, otherwise known as DM Bad Wrong Fun. Tonight, we have a very special guest with us. Some of you may never have seen him, ever, but this is John Wilson, otherwise known as the keeper of the Goodman Games Discord server by Grinsto. How are you doing tonight, John? I am doing well. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Very uh, good. I'm, it's nice to I'm see happy you to be the... here. I'm happy uh, to hear you and see you and all that good stuff. Well, I'm, the... I'm happy to see you out of the print line. <laughs> it's, it's good to have a day off. Yeah, I'm not in a cave or anything. The, the first question I got for you, kind of totally off top, and we're going to hit you with a surprise yeah, one right here, is what is By Grinsto? Where, where did that name come from? Oh, gosh. Um, By Grinsto was a totally made-up name that I came up with in high school when I was fascinated with Monty Python, and there was a sketch where somebody had this incredibly long name where their nameplate on their desk like went off the desk and hit the wall and wrapped around the room for their nameplate. So I made up this stupidly long name that I could never remember. And there was a chunk of it that was the words by grin and stow. And it just stood out to me. And then I used it somewhere and it's just kind of stuck. It just keeps popping up. And I started using it when I was doing drawings for zines and stuff like that. So it's kind of remained attached. And uh, I've used it in forums and things like that. So that's why that's what I've got on Discord. Um, and it prop, pops up, I think, and I think most of my Gong Farmer's Almanac credits are under that. Nice. Well, I mean, most of you guys know him. If you're on the Goodman Games server at all, and uh, Elena, if we could post the link for that or the and the Dungeon Crawler server, uh, yeah. by Grinsto is on there, and he is always helping out with assortments of questions and uh, directing people where they can get assistance. Uh, and so we are very pleased to have you on the episode tonight. Uh, last week, go ahead. Sorry, John. Oh, no, that was just, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Happy to have some great, bad, wrong, ape fun. So we always like to see what you thought, our, our next guest, what they thought of the previous question. So if right, you right. could bring up question number one, Elena, this is one of our questions for Bob Brinkman. In the event of a phlogiston disturbance during a spell duel with more than two casters, are all the casters pulled into the result? I think unanimously we decided that it was only the two individual casters. But what, what's your opinion on that, John? Uh, so spell duels are something that I am incredibly shaky on in the fact that I've read those things, read the rules on it many times, it's never stuck in my brain <laughs> at all. And it's also never come up at the table. Um, rules as written, I don't know if I can comment on that. I mean, I think the name is spelled dual, which implies two. So I'd probably interpret rules as written that way. But honestly, in the moment, if it came up, I would just make whatever seemed like the most fun happen. If, it, if that was everybody, then yeah, everybody and their their goat and whatever is just swept up in it somehow and do something with it. So you've never had the pleasure of being part of a spell duel? It's never come up. I've run mm. a lot of one shots and a lot of those have been for people that are relatively new or completely new. So they're not they're not pushing in that direction. Um, you know, at a convention or something, they're not going, you know, what I've really heard about are these spell duels. I want to make that happen, you know. Um, we're gonna have to find a ringer and get him one one of John's games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I, somebody else was gonna do that. That came up, I think, on Spellburn. And uh, the thing was, you know, well, we got to get in one of your games and immediately cause this to happen. Yeah, um, I'll put on a you know, Groucho Marx mustache, <laughs> you'll never know. I, I won't well, know you're there, it'll be just a stranger wandering well, in. The other question, uh, I know you'll be able to comment on this one, is how creative can a caster be with counter spells doing a spell duel? Elaine, if you could bring up question two, 
I, I know from your responses that you're a pretty creative guy and that you like to go with whatever brings the most fun to the table. So give us your rules as written answer and then give us your opinion. How, how creative can a caster be with those counter spells when they're trying to yeah. counter spell someone? Yeah, that is something I remember thinking about when I first got the rules and read spell duels, you know, back whatever it was, 2012, is it? I, hasn't been that long, has it? 2011. Um, 2011, I think, was beta. Beta, yes. Yeah. And 2012, I think, was, the, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, anyway, when I, I first right. read it, I remember thinking, like, the way it was written, like, if if one caster is throwing a fire spell, the other one has to do ice or cold or water or something to counter it. And I just remember thinking like, well, if your spells are random and you have to have a thing that's specifically like a, lo a logical counter, it seems like spell duels aren't gonna get off the ground really, unless you just have the exact right combination that has come up. So, I think as written, it's got to be a logical counter to whatever the effect is. But I think, again, in practice, I would be trying to stretch that in whatever way made sense in the moment to allow somebody. Uh, and actually, I remember Bob saying something about mercurial effects being used to counter a spell. And I think that's an excellent idea where, you know, the main spell that you're casting is not really going to work. But if the mercurial effect is it sucks all the air out of the room or something like that. Well, that would counter a fire spell pretty well. And why not let that happen? Yeah. And I, I one of Bob's points that really touched base with me for that question was you're countering the spell, not the caster, because I yeah. love to be creative and, you know, cause the building to fall down on the caster. But what he <laughs> said really made sense. And I was like, oh, yeah, you got to counter the spell, not the caster. Yeah, so it's that, the energy battle of the phlogiston more than the characters being clever against each other. But the fighter can come up and sucker punch the other wizard from behind. I suppose, yeah. <laughs> the thief could do a backstab. That wizard yeah. might be distracted. It might be a good time for a backstab, unless they've been pulled into like a pocket dimension to have their duel and they're out of reach. All right, well, we got a whole slew of questions for you that uh, Stefan's going to hit you with about luck. Uh, so start us off, Stefan. Yeah, so uh, if we can get question number one pulled up. See this one a lot. Is starting luck the maximum value it can ever have? Um, in my opinion, absolutely not. Matt? Uh, luck luck is, an, is a reward for the game, right? So yeah. it could go up. So, Elena, if you could bring up question one for us. Oh, she did. Oh, she did? I missed yeah. that. Oh, there's a, there's a delay. That's why I'm always on the delay. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Is starting luck the maximum value a player can have? I, this is kind of a two-pronged answer for me because your maximum luck is a thing, I feel like. But there are events that can carry them past the maximum amount of luck. Um, so I think they can gain luck to increase their maximum, but whatever that maximum value becomes, that is what it is. It can't go past whatever the existing maximum is. I said that in a very complicated way. Yeah, are, you, are you saying it can go up and then that's the new maximum or that anything above your starting maximum is like bonus points that if once you use them, they're gone, they're not... I mean that's well, pretty much how luck works anyway. Once you use yeah, it. it's it's all the new maximum, even or the new minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you spend so, five points. That's your new maximum. Is five points lower than? Elena, if we can bring out handout one AA. So on page thirty six, uh, this is one of my handouts. Stefan has his uh, own. Oh, yeah, I didn't. I don't have access to that. The thief recovers lost luck to a limited extent. The thief's luck score is restored each night by a number of points equal to his level. We know that. The process cannot take his luck score past its natural maximum. That sentence right there. So this is in regards to the thief and the halfling in particular. That means that they can't restore luck 
past their natural maximum. That's the only place kind of the natural maximum is defined in the DCC RPG. Mm -hmm. And just for all the viewers out there, we are using the eighth printing DCC RPG, uh, just because that's what most people have. Um, but it specifically says you can't take that process past his natural maximum. So that establishes the fact that there is a natural maximum. Right. Yep. And I'll say I looked a lot in the book, too. I couldn't find anything that specific about it. I found some stuff, and I've got handouts for it, for saying what luck can do and, you know, what it can typically affect, how to burn luck. Um, but the only thing I found specific to this was, uh, once again, scouring through the forums. If we can get handout 1C up. Uh, it's a post by, uh, you know, Mr. Goodman himself. Uh, is back in 2012, so it's out of the beta days. And he's saying luck can go above the original starting score and go above 18, in theory. For that to happen, they'd have to be presumably burning luck. You know, he says he, you know, doesn't, uh, he doesn't think he's ever had a player, like, hold on to luck like that. So right. that, so that's uh, and there's more to this post that people can read here it's a few paragraphs so i'm not going to go through it all but that's joseph goodman saying you could have a luck of 20 30 but you're gonna have to that's for you're getting those luck rewards for whatever you're doing to get those and you're just never spending your luck and you're never getting cursed to lose your luck either right so my answer is that yes, it can go past the starting maximum value that you can have. And that would become your new maximum. So if we look at handout, uh, let's see, what, what handout, hand, Elena, if you could bring out handout 1cc. Uh, we have to define natural because it says natural maximum. And so I've highlighted the particular definition that I think it applies to. It says of a person born with a particular skill, quality or ability so they're born with it that would be for us upon character creation that would be their natural maximum upon character creation this is what your natural maximum score is now the book does describe other events that can raise luck uh you know through alignment and i think we'll talk more about that with the next question um, but you can develop a new natural maximum i believe uh, whatever that established maximum becomes, you can't go past that as far as gaining XP at the end of it, gaining luck at the end of adventure, or the thieves or halfling can't go beyond that point um, past that natural maximum. Well, I'll say in my last handout, the last paragraph, maybe I should have read it then, but it's uh, continued from the same post. It says, uh, you know, the thief could heal luck back to a higher number so to speak but you know then it says if the thief or the halfling are getting their luck to the point where it's like a huge battery that is getting tapped every single game joseph right. goodman just says the judge needs to do something by a story method to <laughs> you know even that out <laughs> take care of that situation yeah yeah well and that would apply to the next handout i have uh handout 1dd if you can bring out handout uh 1dd elena this is from page 360 so this is talking about your connection to alignment it says luck is a practical mechanism to ensure the characters act within their alignment so i, I believe that joseph wants luck connected with alignment you know in certain instances as far as gaining and losing characters who consistently act out of alignment should receive a permanent luck penalty so this will bring their natural maximum down because it's permanent, which may become steadily worse if they continue to act out of character. Characters who consistently exemplify the virtues of their alignment may over time find themselves becoming luckier, luckier which would indicate that the natural maximum would increase. So, yeah, a lot of, <laughs> go ahead. In, oh, I was just going to say, in terms of terminology, I mean, we, we might be slightly better served by leaving out the word maximum and just talking about, you know, your luck score. Um, because, 
saying there's a new maximum well there's just a new score your yeah. score goes up your score goes down i mean it feels I actually, a bit like a red herring yeah yeah i mean i use in, in in when i'm running stuff i use 18 as a as a maximum um if somebody's got 16 luck for whatever reason and they complete a big adventure and you know things have gone a certain way that seems appropriate to give out a couple points of luck they're now at 18. nothing can push them past 18 unless there's a serious like supernatural intervention the way i run things so a thief or a halfling could potentially get to that 18 but that's a ceiling that they can only cross if there's something going on in the game that i'm deciding is in there that is going to push them to a 19 or a 20 or whatever it may be and then that would be their new ceiling you know right um, or that, like that old D D wish thing of like yeah you're at a like a 18 and a half now <laughs> right right yeah 18 double zero right yeah um yeah you know, so i mean whatever score they've got is just that's their current score and for a thief or a halfling if they've burnt down from that they can heal back to that same score and when i'm handing out an award if they've burnt three points of luck and the award is one point of luck well they've just recovered that point faster okay yep. because I, of course I, I, ecc adventures could happen back to back unexpectedly so you can't count on healing it back it might be totally worthwhile that that point came back that way instead of waiting for it to heal because you might be lickety split into the next thing that's going on so to answer the question is starting luck the maximum value it can ever have uh my opinion would be no and i think that rules as written would also be no because there's many yeah. cases listed in the book well not many but there's some cases listed in the book where it can either fluctuate up or down yeah um, stefan what's your answer i'm i'm in total agreement i thought we would all as we all seem to be be really unanimous about what we thought about this but it's something that we that i wanted to bring on the show because i see it asked i see it asked yeah. not uncommonly yeah yeah and it, th th like you say there are a few examples but they're pretty clear examples that your luck is going to rise and fall and there's nothing stopping it from being a raise above whatever you rolled when you generated the character so and it, well, and not to mention, there's plenty of modules where you gain or lose stats, you know, so if you yeah, get yeah. a item or a potion or something or an interaction with a demon, um, you know, those can raise your luck as well. Oh, yeah. Which so. would give you a new ceiling, just like John said. So, John, what's your official answer? Uh, rules is written uh official answer is yeah it can definitely go above your starting value or whatever whatever value you want to name something could push it up higher all right, all right. The question of what oh yeah well we'll move on to our next question then uh very decisive answer on that one uh we'll bring up question two uh can you use luck to lower a spell check result i've seen people ask this online going yeah, oh yeah. no i'm afraid of that hot max level sleep i don't want to put all my buddies to sleep can, can i use a point of luck to lower it and just put almost the, everyone to sleep the most decisive spell result perhaps in the game the max level <laughs> sleep um i th i think you can i think by raw you can make a case but it is a slightly convoluted case in that almost every time it talks about burning luck, it's saying a bonus. And in this case, it would technically be a reduction, not a, you know, it's not pushing you higher on the chart. It's taking you lower on the chart. But then again, um, if you burnt luck on a fumble roll, going higher is not doing you any favors. You want it to, you know the better result is to take you lower on the fumble chart and i think that's the essence of luck is it makes things better for you or more favorable for you uh most of the time that's a bonus that's raising a number but occasionally you may want to lower a number and i think it's fair to interpret it that way 
um, within raw, but certainly at my table, you can do that kind of thing. What do you think, Stefan? I think you can, uh, as well, uh, use it to lower a spell check result. If you really want, you know, one for one basis as normal, uh, for that same reason, you know, sometimes you get a thing and it says, use the inverse of your luck modifier. Bumble right. examples that John said. So that I think you can, and that's my basis, though it's not actually spelled anywhere in the book that I could find. So if we bring out your handout to a uh, page mm -hmm. 95. Talks well, what do about, you think, Matt? Well, page 95 talks okay. about burning and lock. <laughs> I, I, I need the evidence to kind of go off it. <laughs> Uh, so it says a character can only burn luck to affect his own die rolls. We know that luck can be burned to affect the die rolls. Luck cannot be burned to affect the die rolls of other characters or monsters, even if they affect the character. Um, it's typically used for attack rolls, damage rolls, spell checks, thief checks, and saving throws. So it tells us right there that we can use it on spell checks. Um, but I think it's your next handout that says gives a one-time bonus. Is that correct? Well, my next handout is from the forums, handout 2B. Um, and it's Harley uh, saying, you know, answering some, uh, actually a question by a Chicago wizard who some people in the OSR scene might recognize that name. This is also from the beta days. It's 2011 post. And he says, Raw does not, you know, presently, Raw does not permit selecting the low result. He says, Joseph, please correct me if I've missed that. Joseph did not correct him though. So <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so I I originally thought, you know, using luck to lower result, eh, that's kind of iffy, but then it as I thought about it more, it kind of made sense. So mm -hmm. I did some digging and you know that first line on page 95 that says, as noted earlier, a character can permanently burn luck to give a one-time bonus to a roll. I, I think that we have to define bonus. So if you can bring, out, bring up handout 2AA, Elena, the definition of bonus is something in addition to what is expected or strictly due. Um, there's many other definitions of bonus, most of them in monetary to your, your pay or whatever like that. Um, but most of them are in addition to. I think the definition rules as intended that they used is a bonus, meaning something better is going to happen, right? Um, so if you don't want to put all of your friends asleep, uh, it would definitely be better for them and better for you because you'd have their assistance but I, I still think that's kind of iffy. Do you, do you got more examples to convince me, Stefan? Because I do. It, it's something that uh, I just haven't seen come up very often. Um, I had players start asking about it in my games, and I allowed it because I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But I couldn't find any more written examples. I don't. If you got something hidden up your sleeve, you know, pull it out. But I, I, it's something I allow. I think it's fine rules as written, but I'm also totally admitting it's, it's on flimsy ground. Yeah, yeah. I, so if we bring out handout 2BB, here's the spelling question. And these are results 20 through 29 on, oh, this is color spray. So, you know, color spray 24 to 27, all targets, including allies. Color spray on 28 to 29, all targets, including allies. So, you know, they would obviously want to drop down so they don't damage their friends. Uh, rules is written. I, I don't think I would allow it uh, because it doesn't really specify that you can lower a spell result. And we know that magic is, you know, iffy and fickle anyway. And that's kind of the danger that you take messing with those forces. Uh, that's kind of the risk you take. If you uh, want to do something burn 10 points of spell burn you know it could happen so you have to be cautious about how you use that great power with great power comes great responsibility right so i i mean i think i would allow it just for the fun factor of it but rules is written i don't think you can all right for, for me it also falls into that category of like 
oh, you've found an excuse to burn more of your luck. Yes, I will let you burn more of your luck. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's just like, yeah, let them let them save their bacon now and drive themselves down to a luck of four. And then we'll see how that luck of four plays out. You know, it's it's trading one danger for another sometimes. And I don't I don't have a problem with that. Same. Yeah, I, I allow it. Admit it's on flimsy grounds, but for me, it uh, it adds more fun to the game. It lets players, you know, eke out another win, uh, right. but usually just for that day. Uh, exactly what John said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it might be short lived. All right, so it sounds like we have uh, all three of us are. What's what's the tally of the answers here, Stefan? Officially, me, me and John are saying yes, and you're saying no. I think uh, I think I'm gonna have to say no because bonus is is defined as in addition to uh, and and not really specified as a better thing can happen or or it's not really a better thing it's changing it so you don't get in trouble by killing everyone right yeah that's that's basically it all right so that's our votes on that one two four one against. Well, we'll we'll have to revisit it another time. Get a have Bob back on eventually, and he can give us his answer. Well, that's right. yeah, that's definitely one for your next guest on the next yeah. episode. Of like, what do you <laughs> say on this? You know, and get their get their feedback. All right. Well, well, I mean, what what does Chad think about that one? Chad, what do you uh, what do you think on that? Uh, can luck be used to lower a spell check result? Rules is written. Sky two Seronimus. Yeah, see me in the comments. <laughs> Give me your hot takes. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll, we'll hop on to question four. Why not question three? Because question three got cut for another time. Slash combined into question four. You know, how you look <laughs> at things. <laughs> so, if, Elena, if you would bring that up. It is, uh, can halflings give luck if they are bleeding out? With kind of the bonus attached question. Does bleeding out equal unconscious or simply incapacitated? You want to go first, John? Yeah. So, uh, unless I am mistaken, the death and dying rules are pretty clear that zero hit points means you're dead. And then they go on to describe things that seem to counter contradict uh that statement like the bleeding out rules if you can get to them fast enough you know they come back and rolling the body is like oh well they weren't actually dead they were unconscious and uh whatever you know um yeah <laughs> so so i had a i had a good think about this with halflings because again this is something that hasn't come up directly where a halfling has z hit zero hit points but then another player is doing something and the halfling player is like, well, can I burn luck to, you know, help them? And it's like, well, but your characters, you know, so I, I thought about it and well, I went I'll, back to, oh. I'll, I'll interrupt you. You're, yeah, yeah. there's also the situation of a halfling is bleeding out and going, the, oh man, the clerics lay on hands on me failed. <laughs> yes. It's me. Can I burn luck for, you know, it's, just for right. me it's not for that spell going off over there or that demon right or right well yeah either way but i look i went back and i looked at the the halfling luck ability from scratch you know like the the, the description on it and it's got this you know narrative level description of just having a halfling around is lucky so I always I always try to look at like the narrative level of things before I get into the rule level of things because like to me that's more like what we're actually messing around with and the rules are there to support that. So to me the idea of the halfling just being lucky by being there means maybe there should still be a benefit and the gray area of bleeding out and rolling the body being that they're not they're no they weren't actually dead you know it's sort of like schrodinger's halfling right it's like they've hit zero hit points are they dead or not i don't know and um 
I mean, that's certainly a, as a practical matter with any player character, when they hit zero hit points, it's like they might be dead. We don't know until this plays out the way it's going to play out. We're not sure. So I, I kind of looked at it as a not dead halfling should still be lucky. You know, if the halfling were asleep, well, you still have the halfling around. Maybe they should still be lucky to have around. Maybe if they're incapacitated, but we're not certain if they're dead or not, maybe they should still be able to, you know, do that luck thing that they do. Um, and just for my own sort of thought process, if this ever did come up, I decided they can still burn luck within that window of the bleeding out you know, time frame of their level in rounds. After that point, no. You know, if it's a question of then rolling the body to see if they're still alive, like they're too far gone at that point, they don't get to burn luck. But they have that window. I would, I would, as it stands, I would allow that until, of course, you two describe things and give your opinions. And I go, oh man, I was, I was wrong about that. And, and so my answer would be can halflings give luck if they're bleeding out? Absolutely not. <laughs> Does bleeding out equal unconscious or simply incapacitated? Bleeding out equals dead, not given as an option for my choices. Oh, man. Oh, man. What do you think, Stefan? I see, dead things don't bleed out, they're already yeah. out. Yeah. Um, so it is kind of like, and I'll say if we can bring out hand up for a, you know, my an quick answer is. Yes, I would allow it, um, but it is confusing because it's the bleeding out section starts with saying there's a chance of saving a dead character by healing him very quickly. Like, is he is is this a to get a to give a reference? Neither of you, I think, will get. Is this a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure moment? We see the ghost of the character in the sky. Oh, but hey, at the end of the episode, they're all right. Got a blood transfusion or got healed. Um. Excuse me, I have to go yell at a cloud. <laughs> you kids! <Yeah>. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, so, just for the record, yeah. Elena and Pax both agree that no luck can be used to lower a spell check. I just wanted to take and say that. All, all right. right, all right. So, let me dive Ganging into this okay. question here. Uh, right. Elena, if you could bring out handout 3AA, please. On page 93 of the DCC RPG 8th printing, it says a character or monster dies when it reaches zero hit points. So your halfling reaches zero. The next event in that halfling's life is he's dead, right? <laughs> right. So we further define that as bleeding out. Bleeding yeah. out says there's a chance of saving a dead character by healing him very quickly. But he's still dead. Right, we've defined it as bleeding out, but he's still dead. Uh, it's clearly defined that he's dead. If we could bring out handout three BB, Elena, it goes on on page ninety three to recovering the body. Um, if the body of a dead ally can be recovered, there again defining them as being dead. Okay. Okay, it's, but it's, it says they wait, 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 John. <laughs> it says they might not truly be dead. They're either unconscious or simply stunned. So I will give you that that they were dead, but they came back from life. Yeah. Now yeah. those are a series of events, though. Until we find out, a if he's healed, he's still dead, or b if we flip the body, he's still dead. So he's dead in that transitional period until he's healed. I think there's an argument to be made that in this case, dead may be a term of art, not the literal real world <laughs> sense, because nobody is dead for an hour and then you throw some cold water in their face and they're alive. Um, that, that doesn't happen. So I think it, it may be, you know, it may be that dead at zero hit points is a term of art that just is trying to, you know, say like, treat them like they're dead. They can't do anything or they can't think or, you know, there's no, there's no mind there to do some kind of weird magical mojo on, but they're not dead, dead. If, if we take your explanation, John, and say that they're not dead, dead, and there's no mind and they can't do anything, 
then it's also true they wouldn't be able to see visually with their eyes. Is that correct? Yeah, I guess. I mean, it depends on what what sort of dead they are. I don't know. I mean, uh, that's why I said I, I landed on that tiny window of like, it's just happened. There's a few seconds where maybe the halfling could still influence something. And then that's over. You know, if, if like recovering the body gives you a one hour window, if you're 45 minutes into that window, that halfling is not helping anybody with anything in terms of luck. Um, I, but a short window from the point they hit zero. I mean, I've in terms of role playing games, I've always kind of been bummed out by the idea of you hit zero and you just crash. You know, it's like you're perfectly fine from, you know, 80 hit points down to one and then suddenly you just collapse, you know. So I like the idea of there being a little a little window of, you know, you are in a very bad place, but you could, you know, shakily reach out and push a button or something, you know. So, so giving the halfling that window to spend luck feels okay to me because it's I, not I would the agree on with you. my character hit zero hit points, but was totally running around and, you know, full of energy at one hit point. I would agree with you for the round that they go down. So if they go down in round number X, for that right. round, they would be able to use luck to boost rolls because it's all supposed to be happening simultaneously. Yeah, that too. The, that too. Yeah. Good point. But the next round, I would say, no, you can't use that ability. And the reason being is, Elaine, if you could bring out handout 3CC, please. Uh, page 60, under the halfling's luck, it says, third, a halfling's luck can rub off on those around him. The halfling can expend luck to aid his allies. The ally in question must be nearby and visible to the halfling. If he's dead, bleeding out, unconscious or not all the way dead, rolling the body over, he, he, none of his allies are going to be visible to him. Uh, if we define reaching zero as him going unconscious or bleeding out, uh, he still wouldn't be able to see them visually in order to use that ability. Well, yeah. I, that that handout you got was one I missed. I'll, I'll also throw up uh, to further make me wrong, uh, handout <laughs> 4B. Michael Curtis, 2016, talking on the forums and saying, basically saying, you know, if basically saying no, if someone is out, they're not incapacitated, they're unconscious, they get back to one hit point, they get a regain consciousness. So, yeah, I forgot that, you know, I don't know. I mean, uh, our very, very ableist requirement, though blind halflings can't give out luck i mean if 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 you're in a dungeon and the halfling is around the corridor or through in another room through a closed door you know the rule with them both being alive and well is that they have to have visual contact what if your halfling has daredevil powers <laughs> can he give out luck he's aware but he cannot see Nothing's visible to him, technically speaking, but he's very aware of precisely where you are. I mean, if he has those abilities, then yes, maybe. But still, <laughs> that ability wouldn't be active in his state of unconsciousness. His mind would not be able to process it. <laughs> so I'll... my answer to your question is, can halflings give luck if they're bleeding out? Absolutely not. Uh, they are dead, dying, bleeding out, unconscious i i think it's a series of events you reach zero you're dead if you get healed then you're back up right you you were you were healed before your body completely reached the state of death just like putting the shock pads on you you know they they jolt your heart back to beating uh, that would be the similar circumstance if you're not healed within the rounds of your level then you're possibly dead right so that's the roll the body case. If a halfling said, I want, or if an ally came over and said, I want to roll the body right away, the halfling said, you know, his player said, hey, I just went down, come over and roll the body to see if I'm alive. If they wanted to rush that just to see if he was alive and, you know, didn't have a cleric that could heal him, I, I'd allow that, you know. I mean, rules, mechanics, you can roll the body anytime. An ally would have to do it. Um, but until that body is flipped over and he starts breathing again, 
Absolutely not. They cannot use luck to, to give when they're bleeding out. I'll say for, for my final answer, I think for maybe crossing rules is written a little bit, but I would allow the very next point that the halfling would be in initiative until that passes, they could give out luck. And like that representing, you know, their that ability that you see in the movies of the character to have one final dying word or push that button. Yeah. After after that first initiative point passes, n no. Um, I'll also warn anyone who's going to be in uh, any of Bob Brinkman's games. He's saying in the chat, this big bad is going to try to blind the halfling uh, immediately. <laughs> so uh, y'all watch out. We gave him some bad ideas. Uh, I mean, halflings I, are not lucky, apparently. <laughs> I, I agree with you that until the uh, downed halflings next initiative comes up, that all those instances will be happening simultaneously. So yeah, yeah. from the point of them going down, I think you could use the halfling, could use luck. But after that, uh, bleeding out equals D-E-A-D -E dead, according to Raw. <laughs> Or or not dead according to Ra also. <laughs> not dead until other circumstances squishy. are reached. Yeah. It's a squishy idea. Uh, uh, well, how about you, John? John, um, you, you get the final say. Yeah, I mean I think I think by raw the 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 easiest interpretation is that the character's dead. They're not gonna do anything. But I'm totally buying the, you know, they still have until their next initiative thing, because things are happening. I mean, this is something that gets overlooked a lot, is that everything in a round is not, I clonk somebody with my sword, and then I'm just standing there waiting for my next initiative. No, all these things are happen happening simultaneously or, or seriously overlapped. And the idea that the halfling can still burn a little luck right as a dying ember kind of thing, I think that's totally reasonable. Um, and yeah, for, for my, for my own table, if it came up, I think I would do that whole, whole that whole window of, uh, you know, however many round level in rounds thing. If, if it came up, I wouldn't be suggesting that, but if somebody said, Hey, can I do this? I might be, yeah. Again, let them burn luck. Let them burn luck. Always let them burn luck. All right, so the, the bonus answer, does bleeding out equal, bonus question, does bleeding out equal unconscious or simply incapacitated or dead? What, what do you think, John? I'm, I'm not sure what the big difference is between unconscious and incapacitated. I mean, I guess I, I would you say incapacitated, things, but you still can't do anything. Yeah, you can maybe mutter something, point at right, something, I mean, but... So actually, another point that I didn't bring up, I thought of earlier, was the idea that is the halfling doing something when they're burning luck? I'm going to flip this flip this table right over. Is the halfling burning, or is the halfling doing something when they burn luck for somebody else, or is it just something that's happening? It's a mechanic that the player is employing. It's not anything the halfling is doing. On my tables, I like to use it as. So, you know, somebody's trying to skill check, you know, they're trying to climb up a wall. The thief's trying to climb up a wall and misses by two. The halfling says, I'm going to burn a point of luck. In my games, I like to make it, uh, you know, like a storytelling element where the halfling calls out, hey, th there's a spot right by your right foot. Use that to push yourself up, you know, and kind of uh, actively does something in the game to give them a benefit. I've had players just be like, uh, I'm going to rub the halfling's head in case I need some luck in a minute. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think just like it says, having a halfling in the party is lucky. Um, I think you can totally take that as the halfling's not doing anything. They're just there. And just having them around is better. So, yeah, are they unconscious? Are they incapacitated? Does that matter for them spending luck? I, I think it's pretty gray, really. Um, I think the simplest read of it is you're dead. You can't do any of that stuff. If you're looking for a, a straight, raw interpretation, that would probably be it. 
but I think there's a lot of factors in this. And I think how you define them and how they interact is ultimately what's going to give you the answer for your table. So. I, I'll agree. I'll agree with that. There's a lot going on here. It's all, it's all very simultaneous, quick acting action. It's, anyway, before we, uh, we run up the clock, Oh, we'll yeah, go yeah. on to our last question, though. Uh, this question five is at least what it's labeled as. Should characters gain luck after each adventure? So I see, I think I, you know, we're all going to have some, we've all been doing this for a while, or at least the three of us, but I see this asked a lot on forums too. Right. On Discord of, do I only give luck out when the module says so? Right, you know, people go out. wondering stuff like that. Yeah, um, and we got some good handouts that I think uh, are going to pretty unanimously illuminate things if, if we don't get unanimous from the start already. But, uh, <laughs> but what do you think, John? Uh, I think uh, characters should gain luck after an adventure. Good night, everybody. Oh, um, <laughs> oh, we don't have to cut it that short. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think assuming things went reasonably well and um you know there's other factors like maybe they were sent in by who whatever patron or whatever it is that sent them on a mission and maybe they bungled the mission uh maybe it's still an adventure they still reaped something out of it but they kind of blew it maybe not then but in general yeah after an adventure there should be some kind of luck award of a point or two or so i think so and I think it's raw. Yeah, I 100% it is raw. Should characters gain luck after each adventure? Absolutely. I'll say no. Not each adventure, but they should gain luck if they do something that appeases some something that's more than mundane. You you see a lot in adventures of like, uh, you put the ghost's bones to rest, get a point of luck. You did a thing that the forces of law really wanted you to do, right. get a point of luck or two. Um, and the, the first thing I will point out is, uh, well, you actually spoke a lot earlier. You had a great handout earlier about, you know, talking about the stars aligning, connection to alignment in luck going up and down but the best handout for this is uh handout 5a and it's straight just laid out in the book page 361 yeah and it, we get six great examples of things that you can do that will affect your luck um and it you know it will say it says stuff in there offending a powerful demon devil or deity you know demons and devils that can be that's not just necessarily chaos, deity, not just necessarily law. And that's as effect, you know, minus one, effective immediately. You know, above that, it's saying, uh, you know, specific examples in that first row there. It says writing a great wrong, aiding on an important quest, defeating an evil creature. That's one to three points that you're going to get at the end of the adventure. And lower, we've got another great one. Finding favor with a magical creature of great power. Um, says, you know, gods, extra planar denizens, which ghosts would, I suppose, uh, would count for that. Um, plus one luck at the whim of the creature. So we, we were all kind of pretty close in our answers, but not after every adventure. You got to do something in there because your adventure can't just be, I don't know get some berries and oh we found some <laughs> owl bears in the forest that, that, that's not an adventure was you Tuesday. fought some owl Come bears that, yeah. that's a harvesting <laughs> mission <laughs> that's a fetch quest yeah all right i mean so if we look at the same page page 361 uh we don't have a handout for it but right at the top right it says gaining and losing luck regardless of greater plot themes luck is gained and lost over the course of adventures as shown on table seven nine which we do have the handout for stefan that's a great handout yeah so yeah. table seven nine it says regardless of the plot themes this is your table for gaining and, and losing luck in game terms under the first one this represents the objectives of individual adventures 
So it definitely has to be an adventure. But when that objective is either won or lost, I think that would be a, you know, a plus or a minus to the luck. Uh, in my world, that would be at the end of the module. Yeah. That, it's usually when I do it at the end of the adventure, but it, it depends. I mean, that table right there, it has a lot of it depends written into it. So <laughs> well, yeah. let's yeah, yeah. bring... Elena, if you could bring out handout 4AA, please. On page 19, and it's very front of the book, it says, for all characters, luck may be restored over the course of their adventures. And this restoration process is loosely linked to the character's alignment. Characters that act against their alignment may find themselves suddenly unlucky. Those who swear an oath to a patron of their newly desired alignment may find the change easier. So if they were going if they're lawful and they're acting chaotic uh they're gonna lose luck but then if they make a bargain with a chaotic patron then they may gain luck um, but that right there says luck is restored over the course of adventures we can definitely get it back and it's loosely connected to the character's alignment so that goes back to table seven nine when it's talking about you know getting luck from an offending demon or a penalty or awarded for faithful obedience, it doesn't necessarily have to be at the end of an adventure. It could be during or right at the start if they do something that acts within their alignment, I, I would say. And, and fortunately, alignment is an easy, streamlined concept that nobody has <laughs> any confusion or controversy about to make that an easy process to apply, <laughs> apply luck rewards tied to it. Yep, that's exactly why we only need the next, like, two or three minutes to cover alignment. <laughs> yes, a quick recap on alignment. <laughs> so what are our answers to this first, this uh, last and final question? Stefan, should characters gain luck after each adventure? Not each adventure, but they should if, uh, I mean, go by table seven, nine. They, sh they should do it if they've done something really amazing. Uh, my answer is going to be absolutely 100%. Give them luck after each adventure uh, or take it away if they failed. I, I think, you know, it's clearly defined. If they complete the objectives of an individual adventure, they gain to one to three awarded at the end of that adventure. Uh, but John, you have the final word. What do you think? I think they should get luck after every adventure, but there's a chance that it could be zero luck. So... <laughs> I mean, it's something, it's definitely something you should be thinking about as you're running an adventure and consider whether, you know, what it should be, what the answer is at the end of the adventure based on what happened. Uh, it's probably, probably worth at least a couple, one or two points of luck, maybe more. But uh, there could be a situation where, yeah, it's like a wash. You know, they did some things that were bad. They did some things that were good. It comes out of zero. If uh, if you're playing with fleeting luck, so I guess only rules are written in length are, but if you're playing with fleeting luck, maybe, and it's an iffy situation, maybe start them out with like an extra fleeting luck token at the beginning of the game. Because everyone starts out with one, maybe they start out with two next time. That way it's, yeah. if it was iffy, little bonus, but not permanent. Yeah, that works. Well, as you can see, everyone, the opinions are varied. Um, the viewpoints that we provide to you on this show are not law. They are not, you know, written in concrete. They're only as we define them within ourselves. Uh, but we're trying to work this stuff out there for you and get you a better answer for your table. But the bottom line is whatever works for your table is what you should go with. John, I want to thank you very much for being a guest on the show tonight yeah thanks for having me you got it you got anything going on any any goodman games news you can tell us about any inside secrets uh dcc day is coming up there's oh, a yeah. picture from the print mine show next week uh oh, oh, we don't get the secret preview of the next issue of night soil i'm looking forward uh, to it John. Uh, yeah well uh if i can get that adventure pulled together then that'll be <laughs> that issue will right. debut. I'm actually I'm I'm hoping I, I shouldn't say this, but I'm hoping for maybe not the Zine Quest that's in August, but the Zine Quest that's in February. Like 
hopefully by then it'll all be packaged up and ready to roll so fingers crossed it's a triple issue so it's taking a little longer everybody if you've disagreed with john's opinions you can find him on the goodman game server just message by grinsto uh, <laughs> he loves all your comments especially um, the disagreements those are my favorite <laughs> if it's difficult to articulate just at him and say you suck that's yeah, right that works that's that's, that's sufficient you don't uh, know what you're talking about next episode <laughs> will be july 19th uh, we are going to have a judges episode with two of our judges from the Dungeon Crawler server, Bread Wizard, also known as Darren, and Brew and Drood, also known as Jake. Uh, we're going to get some some people in the trenches running these games to find out what their opinions are, and we will be doing an episode uh, dedicated to the warrior, uh, answering some of your great warrior questions. Um, like John said, DCC Day is coming up. Also on Friday, there is going to be an special auction on the goodman games website right before the reaver express uh stefan do you got any closing words uh bid with your hearts on that auction there's also going to be some great items harley's been talking it up doug kovacs originals and and also the book the one core rule book that harley says he has always run games out of since the beginning of dcc it's he's getting I'm sure he's got a lot of other core rule books on his shelves, but he's only ever run out of one book, and that's going to be up for auction. Just don't bid on items that I'm bidding on. Or the ones that I'm bidding on, unless you're bidding higher. I guess it's all right. <laughs> all right, John, anything in closing you want to say to our viewers? Uh, remember to burn luck on your luck checks. Yes. Right. <laughs> That we'll That's address a whole other that. Episode. We'll address that <laughs> next episode. Thanks everybody and have a good night. Good night.